Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Um, today we're going to talk about omega-3 fatty acid supplements and prescription omega-3 fatty acids. And I'll just start by saying there is an overwhelming amount of information that shows that omega-3 fatty acid supplements from plant sources, animal sources, fish oil, added to fortified foods, any way it's delivered, completely useless. Yet I get emails, I bet I get at least five or six emails a week uh, from people who've been advised to take the supplements and they're wondering if it's a good idea or a bad idea. Lots of articles in the Health Priest Library about those, so I just refer people to the library for more information. And a significant percentage of our new members are taking the supplements when they join. Now, the issue where this gets confusing for people, and it's why you want to join and let us teach you how to read this stuff, you can always find a study that will show almost anything you want to talk about. If you want to find a study that says, you know, eating chocolate in the middle of the street at two o'clock causes weight loss, there's probably something out there because the medical journals are clogged with garbage. So there are some small and very poorly designed studies that have shown that taking supplements or consuming more foods that are higher in omega-3s actually improves health. But the problem is they're small, they're poorly designed, they have a low, uh, very small effect. And then when you do a meta-analysis, that effect completely disappears. So for example, analysis published in 2012 included 20 studies with over 68,000 subjects. Researchers looked at the effect of omega-3 supplementation and concluded, quote, Overall, omega-3 supplementation was not associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality, cardiac death, sudden death, myocardial and cardial infarction, or stroke based on relative and absolute measures of association. English translation for that, useless, all right? Another study looked at the effect of omega-3 supplements on patients who had several risk factors for cardiovascular disease but hadn't yet had an event like a heart attack or stroke. So the omega-3s would have been used for primary prevention. The study included over 12,000 patients who were randomly assigned to take EPA or DH, an EPA DHA capsule or placebo, and the placebo uh, was olive oil uh, in a pill. After five years of follow-up, 11.7% of those taking the EPA DHA supplement and 11.9% of those taking olive oil had died or had had a non-fatal myocardial inf infarction or a stroke. Olive oil was slightly worse than EPA DHA, but both were essentially useless, all right? A large meta-analysis confirms these findings. Published in 2018, the analysis included 79 studies with 112,000 participants. The studies looked at omega-3 fatty acids consumed in fish. They looked at EPA and DHA intake from both animal and plant foods, supplements and fortified foods. The trials were between 12 and 72 months duration and included adults with varying levels of cardiovascular risk factors or disease in wealthy countries. The analysis showed that increased intake of omega-3 fatty acids from these sources, all of them, did not reduce all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, or cardiovascular events. Higher omega-3 intake slightly increased the risk of stroke, but it wasn't statistically significant. The authors note that, to my point made earlier, that some low-quality evidence and trials with higher risk of bias show a little bit of benefit, but that this analysis, and it is the most extensive systematic assessment to date, shows absolutely no benefit at all. The most recent study that I could find, and I've, I've been covering this for years, and I keep telling myself, and I keep saying to you, if you go back and look at some of my older videos, I'm going to stop talking about omega-3 because it, there's just no reason to, you know, go over the same thing again and again. It's useless, 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 sort of like what I've done with vitamin D, only some new study comes that shows it's harmful in a different way, and I feel like I should create a video. Well, anyway, I went looking for something recent. I found it. A study that looked at the effect of omega-3 on cardiovascular health showed that both omega-3 and vitamin D uh, did not prevent cardiovascular events or cancer. So this looked at two supplements and two diseases. The study included almost 26,000 participants. They were an average of 67 years old, followed for, for 5.3 years average. Both supplements were useless for both conditions. So again, I, I probably have another dozen articles in the library same thing. They're useless, they're useless, they're useless. Well, in spite of these and dozens of other published analyses, sales of omega-3 fatty acid supplements remain really high, and a significant percentage of people in the general population think that they are deficient and they need this stuff. And the drug companies are always looking for opportunities, and this enthusiasm about this useless product has not been lost on them. So the drug companies have been busy developing pharmaceutical versions of omega-3s and DHA and EPA. One drug that you may have seen advertised on TV is Vasipa, 
I don't watch much TV, so if I see an ad a lot, it must be that these people must be, well, they are spending hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, the drug companies have essentially bought the media, I'm fortunate as that is. Um, anyway, it's being advertised as being superior to dietary omega-3 supplements for lowering the risk of cardiovascular events. The drug was actually originally approved in 2012 to treat people with high triglycerides, and the drug maker, Amarin, has applied to the FDA for approval to use Vasipa to treat cardiovascular disease. Now, a drug would not have to perform very well in order to meet the standard of being better than dietary supplement form of EPA, DHA, omega-3 because the studies that I've got, the analyses show it's useless. So to be better than useless is a pretty low bar to set. So the study that um, is being used to uh, try to convince the FDA that they should approve um, the SEPA for cardiovascular disease, and they'll approve it. They approve 96%. I've always said I want to see the 4% that they turn down because it must be choice. It must be like intravenous arsenic, and there's probably some conversation in the hallway about bring it back next year and what we got to look like we're paying attention, right? Well, anyway, the study included 8,179 patients with fasting triglycerides of between 135 and 499. LDL cholesterol ranging from 41 to 100, and cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, or other risk factors. The participants were randomized to take the SEPA or placebo and followed for almost five years. And here were the results. I mean, I have a lot of data in the article, and I'm not going to read all of it to you, but, but the bottom line is the risk of cardiovascular death was reduced by 0.9%, nine-tenths of a percent, nine-tenths of a percent reduction in death from any cause, 1% uh, reduction in, um, uh, in hospitalization for AFib, uh, fatal or non-fatal stroke, a 0.99 tenths of a percent reduction, uh, atrial fibrillation um, outside of hospital, a 1.4% increase in risk, and peripheral edema, um, a 1.5% increase, and also a 6 tenths of a percent increase in serious bleeding events. So not much of a decrease, and for that you get an increased risk of, um, of uh, edema, AFib, and serious bleeding events. Doesn't sound like a very good proposition to me. Now, the manufacturer paints a totally different picture. Amarin reports that, quote, the SEPA lowers the risk of heart attacks and strokes in patients with very high triglycerides and whose cholesterol levels were already held in check by drugs and statins. They reported a 25% reduction in the relative risk of heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular death, or hospitalization for unstable angina or bypass surgery. Well, of course, the glowing results are, and they even admit it, in relative rather than absolute terms because um, the absolute benefit, which I've expressed here, uh, while much more accurate, is so much less impressive. And the thing I have to add, too, is the um, triglycerides. They're calling this group, you know, the, the that they have high triglycerides, but um, the range was 135 to 499. So some of these people really were off the charts in terms of, of triglycerides, but there are enough people in the normal range that um, this really wasn't a high risk group entirely based on triglycerides, but they never play fair. I mean, the drug companies, they're all convicted criminals. I'm not kidding. Um, and they do not run their trials in a way that would give you an objective look at Vasipa. So with all the maneuvering that they do, this drug still pretty much comes out useless. Um, now, Anne Skillis Ray is an assistant professor in the Department of Nutrition Sciences at the University of Arizona, and she says this stuff is the bee's knees. And she points out in an interview um, that, um, that omega-3 fatty acid supplements are not regulated by the FDA, and, um, and they should not be used in replacement for prescription medications like the SEPA uh, for the long-term management of high triglycerides and for cardiovascular risk mitigation. Um, now, both Ms. Skillis Ray and the very expensive advertising campaign for Vasipa both convey the idea that the reason why omega-3 um, intake supplementation hasn't worked is because dietary supplements are inferior to drugs. But the real reason is that omega-3 supplementation in any form is a solution looking for a problem. In other words, the, the basic assumption that everybody is deficient in omega-3 fatty acids is faulty on its face. The National Institutes of Health states that there is no estimated average requirement for omega-3s or EPA or DHA, so adequate intake was used to develop guidelines
points and is established as follows. And I won't read you this whole chart, which I've included in here, but for adults, um, 19 to 50 years old, 1.6 uh, grams a, a day for, for men and 1.1 for women which if you just run any one or two day menu plan through a nutrition calculator, you'll find out it's very hard to be deficient in omega-3s. Plant sources of omega-3 include leafy green vegetables, black seeds, walnuts, soy, legumes, split peas, citrus fruit, melons, and cherries. And even apples have um, uh, uh, some omega-3. And most people don't think of apples as having omega-3 fatty acids, but they do. There is no evidence that people eating a well-structured plant-based diet, or any diet for that matter, are deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, which is why supplements and this new drug actually it's an old drug trying to be repurposed for a new use, have show basically no benefit whatsoever. So the bottom line is this omega-3 thing, it's another medical myth. It's driven by people who want to sell supplements and or drugs in the case of what I'm covering here. Um, sort of like the vitamin D thing, all made up by somebody or a group of somebodies and promoted. It's, it's medical myth making. And um, and there's so much in the way of medical myths out there. I mean, it's a full-time job for me to just keep up with the daily news. We, we could have video clips 10 times a day and never cover all the uh, medical myth-making that goes on just in a week in the United States of America. So hopefully that helps. And, and I, I, I would say this is the last time I'm going to cover it, but I'm sure that I'll go back on that promise because something else interesting will come along like this information and I'll feel like I should report it to you. All right, that's all for today and all for the week. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and um, uh, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you next week with more news.